were just at a very fine artist's uh, house yesterday, and he started at age six. So he had a bit of a head start. <laughs> and so starting that late is, is uh, a bit unusual. But I read a uh, biography, autobiography or a, a treatise by um, uh, Winston Churchill, and he started in his mid-50s also to paint. And like me, he was extremely grateful for the gift of painting because he had so many mental responsibilities that painting gave him a way to just he said you can't really relax by just relaxing. The brain keeps going. And he said most people try to relax by doing something that they're already overburdened doing. So somebody who's an executive will relax by playing chess where you have to figure out all, you know. And so he said if you do something completely different, it keeps you focused but it relaxes another it relaxes your brain because you're using another part of it and painting was has been very much a gift for me so how i started first of all i came from an artistic family my father was an architect my mother was a weaver and became an architect by um, by marriage with my father my older brother is an architect my younger brother is a professor of graphic arts at an art college, and my sister was a potter. So I was the rebel, and I refused to be an artist. <laughs> but I suppose it was somewhere in my genetic makeup. So the way that I started painting was uh, actually quite, quite odd. So. I had a healing treatment by a healer who used color therapy. And to be honest, subtle healing treatments don't usually have very much effect on me. But this time, he had you look into a long chrome tube, and at the end of that tube was a very bright color. And he was an inventor. And so he had invented a means by which he could turn a dial and it changed the frequency of the light so he could have a million different lights shining. And so he did muscle testing and determined through that what color your body needed. And then he would provide that exact wavelength of color. It was quite interesting. Um, and as I say, I usually don't get many much benefit from these kinds of things but when I finished that treatment it felt like my body was filled with helium. I, I felt hardly touching the floor and the colors stayed in my mind for two very vividly for two or three weeks after that. So I realized from that that somewhere in my psyche or my physical body, I needed color vibration. And I thought, well, maybe I would create a little theatrical gel and put it on the altar. And somehow that seemed kind of hokey, you know, kind of amateurish. I, I didn't really resonate with that. Well, one of the qualities of our family, and especially my mother, was she had the attitude that if anyone in the world had done anything, then I can do it too. And she was always involved in some project. Very, very energetic person. And so I grew up <clears throat> always taking on projects, you know, that often initiated by my mother. So after rejecting the idea of the uh, gels, I thought, well, I could create color by painting. And so we had a big wall in our living room that was 
about the size of that, a blank wall, and it had a little painting on it about the size of the spiritual eye, a little bitty painting and a big wall. And I thought, well, we need a bigger painting. <laughs> and so I went to this uh, local art store, and I was so ignorant that I didn't even know what kind of paints to buy. I ended up buying paints that are used for crafts, like if you're painting a little wooden duck or something like that. That was the kind of paint I got at first. And so it took me a little while, and then I got a book, and I read, you know, I realized I had the wrong paints. And, but uh, it came very quickly, the ability to, to um, do some kind of art. And when I told Swamiji that I was painting, he said, very good, very good. He said, you're too mental and too intellectual, and you need to develop more of an intuitive flow. And so he was very much encouraging in, in, for me in, in taking on the art. And I paint normally in oils and sometimes in acrylic. I tried painting in watercolor, but for me, it didn't work because I, in watercolor, at least the way I understood it, you had to plan out the whole painting. So you had to mask out those areas that you were going to keep white. and um, it, it was, again, kind of an intellectual exercise for me. So, but acrylics and oils, you can paint over. And so if you were to look, on, well, these are prints, most of them, but, but these four are original paintings. And if you were going to, able to look under the surface, you'd see that I've painted over a lot of things because as I begin to paint, I have some idea of what I'm trying to paint and what I'm trying to express. But in the process, the painting itself begins to speak to me. And um, and so there's a it's almost like a dialogue with it, and then by the end of that whole process, I realized that in many cases the painting had me fix up something that was not artistically incorrect, but that was spiritually incorrect, and so basically all of the paintings have have some spiritual meaning. There are a few that, that don't, that are just a, a scene or painted for fun. But most of them come from a, a meditation or an idea or a spiritual symbolism. So you'll see that almost all of my paintings end up going out into infinity. This famous artist that we were with yesterday, almost all of his paintings were enclosed. It was a room or a village or, but, but there would be walls or some structure that ended. So where you stood and how far that scene went in his might be 50 meters, 20 meters, 100 meters, something like that. Mine, generally speaking, are 25,000 miles, 100,000 miles. You know, they just go off into infinity. And that's part of, part of what inspires me artistically and, and uh, in meditation.